Hello. How's it going, man? Everything fine for me and for you? Good. Good, yeah. So awesome. You added some other, uh, other uh, students? Yep. I bunched them all into one big, one big time. Yeah, eh? Nice. <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh, I did send uh, I you did send a friend, request, friend request, and I don't know I why, don't know but why I hear I myself. myself. You good now? Um, good I now, think, right? Yeah, now it's better, yes. Okay, yeah, sorry, yeah, I had to, uh, my cords were caught on uh, okay. each other, so. <clears throat> Alright, no I'm logging in now. Problem. You are on NA or Europe? Oh, on NA. Okay, sorry. no problem. So let's see. I think I did send you a friend request. Okay. So uh, where'd you learn how to speak English? Um, I would say school, but that's not really true. <laughs> so basically, I, I had the what's called the the basics in school. That's for sure. Yeah, but yeah. really, speaking English was taught by myself, like when right, I yeah. was t like in, in, I don't know what's the term in English, but in higher class school before studying on university. Yeah, high school, yeah. Yeah, there we had this this lecture which required us to, to talk to a specific topic like genetic foods or... Educa internet education at school, stuff like that. And in order right. to prepare that, I started YouTube and talking while playing StarCraft 2. So I watched a lot of streams and Husky StarCraft, for example, and all those phrases they used, I were um, writing down and learning myself, and I, I just forced myself to talk a lot while playing. Good for you, man. That's 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 hard. But it was hard worth stuff. it. I got I got a good grade, so that's yeah, nice. Yeah, good for you, man. That's awesome. Yeah, I kind of know the feeling, like um, like here in Canada, like um, there's a French population, so there's a um, a lot of French speaking people, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, it's tough, man. Like uh, like I, I've learned like some basic phrases and you know some words, but like it, it's really tough. Like uh, so yeah, that's good. That's true. Yeah. So I don't know if you can add me. I, I think I did add you, but ah, there you are. Yeah, I, I added you. I, I seen it. <clears throat> okay. So what we need to do basically is go into Archon mode, I think. Okay. Um, because I don't have people for you to play against. If you have someone in your eddy, that would be awesome. But as I said, I can't really provide you with yeah, people so to play against. So. Yeah, what could we do here? So, like, play against somebody, like, on Archon? That's what it would be if you don't have any replays to go over. Oh, right, yeah. Okay. Well, do you want to do you wanna go through a replay or two, maybe? And then and then maybe play some Archon? Like, I'll see if I can find a good game for you to watch. Um, that that like would a, like work. A, that, a good that, replay, you know? That, that could work. I just know that... I mean... You are surely not a bad player, but if I give you all the, if I dictate you all the actions you need to do while playing, you don't gain as much intel out of it as if I would talk to you and tell you at specific times in the replay what to do and why and point out why so you understand better. Yeah. Exactly. Normally I do the live coaching later on, like if you have like five to six lessons where we where I talked everything about you for you to know. So I know, okay, how to set a vision, how to do multitasking, how to use my army, my hotkeys, how to macro, how to do the transition, all that stuff. If you know it, really knowing, yes. then we can start to improve it together if you choose to. But normally I need to get you the basics at hand where you can work yourself on as well. Because I won't be here forever for you to play, so I try to give my students the possibility to teach themselves how to get better. That's the main goal. 
Yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, uh, let's, yeah, I'll see if I can find some replays. Um, uh, fuck. I lost quite a bit here. That's this. good. You don't uh, want yeah. to watch at games where you won. <laughs> no, I know, right? Yeah, it's a thing, right? Um, I'm just trying to find, like, what's the easiest way of, like, going through your replays and, like, finding... Good question. You know, it's it's hard because every time you exit out, yeah, you have to go you have to go back in and then click on one. That's true. Oh, here we go. Ne never mind, that works better. Okay. You have one. Okay, then you uh, just need to invite me into it. Okay, so this one here I lost. Uh, story. I don't know. Um, let's go through maybe this one, I guess. I played. I played genocide. Uh, do you want to give me? Uh, you need leader? promotion. Okay. So I give you promotion. Uh, we go into the replay, and then you give me the lobby and promotion leader again. Okay. So I can set the speed and go back and forth and point of stuff that I, I need the leader for. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So. Awesome. Should work. I can't remember. I think I. I don't know. I don't know what happened this game. It's against a golden, so I don't know what I did wrong. I, can't <laughs> this, I, I just know that I lost it, but I know that like, it was fairly close. <laughs> okay. Now we sure will find out. That's the least issue. Mm. Oh, I need to open a notepad. I forgot. Because I'm making notes for my students of everything oh, right. important we talk about. Yeah, definitely. Uh, let me grab one too, actually. So, TC. I, I, can't then... remember what I, I can't remember what I did this game, but I mean, we'll see. Uh, I, I don't. Hotkeys. Yeah, I don't know. Let's watch it. Yeah. So. What was. It? Oh, how yeah. I, one... How did I watch you there? 1 1 or. Oh, never mind. That's not right. Alright, 2 2. Okay. Um. Again. Okay. So let's see. You go for gas first. Okay. That's interesting. So do you play the two one one with a gas first? No. See, I think I went one 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 here. I don't know. I, I can't remember. I think. Okay. So I've been kind of like, just kind of like all over the place a little bit sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like I was just losing a lot. I was just I was just like frustrated. Oh yeah, um, I see. I, I know this feeling a lot. Yeah. Um but then, you know, so now I've but now I've kind of standardized um a little bit and so what I'll usually do is I'll drop the supply depot, keep making SUVs and then make the barracks and then make my dash. Ah. There's one thing we can improve already, which is positioning of your barracks in this specific situation um not with a one 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 basically but overall if you have the barracks positioned like that with the reactor it can happen sometimes that your opponent the circ sneaks out some circlings and three circlings attacking the reactor would be enough to kill it before it finishes as it oh, wow. is producing, you can't repair it, and if you cancel it, the circlings are also in. So what you yeah. want to do is have a little bit of different setup of this barracks. It's okay. like under, right underneath the first supply depot, you will have later on set the second one, and then left, no, right to that second supply depot, you will have the barracks. So the barracks will close the wall with the two supply depots and the reactor will, will be right next to where it is located now like above the SEV yeah. there will be the reactor so it can't be attacked by by circlings at all yeah okay so like so you build so you build the barracks where it is right like I have it placed properly right you build the barracks where the reactor is so that the edge of the barracks is where the edge of the reactor would be with the ramp on the right side. Oh, okay. I'm confused. You'll have to maybe show me. I will show you. That's not a yeah. problem. Yeah, we'll go off that later, okay? Yes. <coughs> That's not a problem. 
Okay, at least you did scout with the SUV, that's nice. You did scout two gases, so that's a little yeah. bit unusual already. Definitely, yeah, yeah. I don't know what he's playing to do here. He has a lot of minerals, so basically he needs to do something. He's not producing queens. There you go, baneling nest. And you didn't go for a reaper? No, okay. That, that's interesting. The scan is very good. In this case, so... That, that's nice that you saw, okay, something is going on there and you scanned it. And you go for a tank. You're playing very defensive in this game so far. I wouldn't go down with the marines at all if you scout a baneling nest. Um, it's very risky to have those units down there without the wall. It works now, I guess? That's yeah, fine. It's it's strange. He's playing a little bit strange. <laughs> no, he's really playing. Uh, but you said he's gold, right? So that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, so let's not focus so much on him, but more on you. Mm -hmm. mm, besides this build, which I wouldn't recommend at all, but. Uh, you know that already. I mean, the 2 one, one is the way to go. Maybe something with Heli and Banji can work as well. But I would go 2 one, one. Besides yeah. that, let's see... Okay, you have a lot of idle SUVs right here, so that's yeah, a little mistake. I don't usually do that. Um, I did notice it right here though, I'm pretty sure. And yeah. Back to work. yeah. And you are overproducing supply depots a lot. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> I did this game, didn't I? Quite a lot. Mm. I, think I, was off, I think I was off my game. For sure. Quite this quite a bit. The eBay should be part of the wall, I guess, normally. At least it's a good building to have in the wall, most times. Mm. What you do nicely is, let's see, how did you do it with the <gasps> supply depot? Oh, it was cute, okay. Never mind. Um, do you normally get supply capped? Usually later on, like usually not this early. Um, so yeah. when do you get supply cap roughly? Uh, Mid -game? Usually when I'm like, usually when there's a little more going on, like I'm. Uh, okay. <clears throat> usually when I'm like fully saturated on on my two bases, uh, okay. producing a lot. Like I have my uh, my other barracks is finished. Like that's usually when I get supply block because, but I know what to do. Like I know I just have to build two supply depots at a time. Okay, um, that's good. Do you use the idle worker trick for that? Uh, I have a hotkey for idle workers. Yes. That I'm starting to try and use. Okay. Um, because the idle worker trick basically is that you produce the supply depot like you did here. Hmm? You don't shift click the SUV back and as soon as it highlights as idle you click on the button or hotkey with the button. And the chumps selects the SUV and you can build the next supply depot. And as you said, you do, you do oh, this with, yeah. with two SUVs oh. at this time and then you never get supply blocked, basically. Yeah, exactly. That's, so if, that's you see the that, idea. if you see that button lit up, then you usually know that you need to start building another one. Right? Yeah, it's called the idle worker trick. And it, it works very nice for every Terran. Like, it's not perfect, but it's very good for... Not keep yes. getting supply blocks. So that yes. that's what I what I. What would. do you what do you usually do with your SUVs that are, that you're that are building your extra barracks? I shift click them back. So shift click. What does that do? They go back to what they were doing before, or they do go there. So with shift clicking, you set a queue of commands. For example, you can have units move command or attack command you never never use move command unless drop ships and units which should not attack other units when they are moving across the map but rarely but I, either way um, with the shift click let's see you have your army your medivacs okay let's let's say you would load up oh wait it selects does it select all of them no 
this would be the control key. Um, let's let's pursue. Let let's say you have the marines loaded up into the medivac, and you want to drop here, okay? So when you would load them up and use the drop command on top of the uh, enemy space, they would fly like this. You see the pings in a straight no. line. You don't see the no. pings. I don't see the thing. Am I frozen here? Um, do you see both players? I do. Oh, no, I don't. I don't. Ah. Okay, let me just see that I get rid of the stupid pings. Okay. So, like this. If you don't use the shift key, just the uh, drop, they would move in a straight line to your I opponent. Don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't see the, uh, I don't see the Zerg space at all. Oh. Did you press E on your on your keyboard? Oh, E. There we go. Okay. okay. So it would it move move in a straight line if you okay. just drop. But with the shift, you can give him multiple commands which he will do each after each other. So you can shift click here and then shift click here. Oh, okay. So he will move just to the so top, and then he gets spotted. Yes, exactly. And for the SCVs, it's the same. So you you sh you click on the barracks, shift click on the mineral line. So as soon as the barracks finishes, it goes back to work. Oh, okay, so he's working on the barracks. I have him selected. I shift click on a mineral patch, and he'll go work. After yes, that. even before the barracks is under construction. Just if you give him the command, you can already shift-click him back to the mineral field. Okay, so I click on an S... Like, so for instance, I'll click on an SUV. Yes. I'll click... I use grid, so I'll, I'll mm -hmm. press Z. Yeah. And then A, he'll build a barracks. Uh -huh. And then I can shift-click on a mineral patch yep. before any he does any of this, and then he'll go and do that afterwards. Yes. Oh, awesome. Okay. And you can do this with multiple SCVs selected. So for instance, you have three SCVs selected, build three barracks, each will go to a different location to build the barracks, shift click all to the same mineral field, sure they will go to the same mineral field, but that doesn't matter, they spread out themselves accordingly. Yeah, exactly. Okay, awesome. And that's Excellent. that's that's the thing with and you can use this for for like the drop ships or moving your your army if you want to avoid the the watchtower you can sit at home say okay go there 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 and then there and they do it and you don't even need to to monitor them while they are doing it you don't need so to do you, so you let's say you have your army selected um do you yeah. would you go like shift attack move shift attack move the fun thing is what i do is i press a so i have the attack move selected and then I just hold the shift key and press left, 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 left. And all of those moves will be attack commands. Oh god, okay. So, uh, I already have attack selected. So I, I have my army selected. I'm, I have attack move ready to be clicked. Yes. And I instead shift click all the way down. And instead of just left clicking so they move there, you hold shift and click left, and then you click somewhere else left, somewhere else left, somewhere else, and all of those sh will be attack commands. Oh, awesome. Okay, I'll have to start using the shift more, for sure. Oh, yeah. Okay. Use shift Sweet. command. Excellent. Okay. Let's do it. That's that's <laughs> really, really helpful. That, yeah, that will... That, that should help quite a bit, yeah. I mean, the, the, the good thing is, it will open up windows for yourself to do other actions. You don't need to monitor all your units while they are moving around, or are they finished or not, and you, you put a lot of stress away from you if you just give them multiple commands at a time, which that's they true. can execute each after another. Uh, yeah, that's very true, man. So that's awesome. that's really... That's really interesting that you didn't know that. It's not bad at all. I just never had this instance. That's really cool. Because I, yeah. I really I rarely ever can talk about it. And now I could. Yeah. That's that's cool. 
And if you use it, you will see this, this alone will help you a lot in your games. It should. Okay, yeah. It definitely, definitely. should. I'll try and uh, yeah, definitely use that. The, the good thing is you can you can queue this up with, with everything. You can, for example, attack move your, your medivacs and shift unload them. So they will move, move, move. And the last command is unload where they unload at the location where you... Sad yeah, so I have, I have my two medivacs unloaded, I'm going to move them, shift click them over to where I want, and then the last shift click, it's a shift V for unload, right? Yeah. And then click? Yeah, okay. Yeah. <clears throat> it, it, will, it will require you a lot of practice, but if you get used to it, you will see it heavily should boost you. In your games. So this was a little bit unfortunate. Slow reaction time here. Losing a medivac. Mm, but still... I'm, I'm pretty screwed at this point, honestly. <clears throat> I don't know. I, I, this, this might not be the best game to go over, but... I think you're still in a very winnable position. You have more army, more units. Uh, the upgrades are even as well. It's not too bad. I don't know how or why you lost this. Um, so here's the thing, normally what will win you the game in, in your league most of the time, I can't promise you to win all games, that's absurd, but instead of uh, maybe 50% win-loss ratio which keeps you in platinum, maybe we can boost it up to 55 or 60%, which will be enough to over time get you out of platinum. Therefore yeah. I would recommend you to get some benchmarkers. Benchmarks which you can work on to reach them, uh, like macro-oriented goals. Right, like 200 supply by like 9 mm. minutes or something? Something like that. So the benchmarks I want to provide you with are at 7 minute mark, 50 SCVs with 100 to 110 supply, and 10 minutes max out. 3 base saturation and maybe 2-2 two, two done or halfway done. Right. If you reach those goals, you will be on Master League, GM League level already with your macro. So right. if you only get like 90 or 80% of this done, it's still fine. It's right. still good. But as benchmarks for you to practice, you can go into a custom game against an easy AI, boring, I know, but practice it. It will, You will be challenged and it will be mind-blowing how challenging it can be just to sit at your base doing nothing but macro and you won't hit those goals. Yeah. <laughs> That's, yeah. It, it can be frustrating, but it will be an eye-opener for you to, wow, there's so much I can improve not by my opponent out on the field but just in my base yeah, like oh, yeah. macro upgrades like g getting get where's your armory for instance in the second ebay it's late it's super late so is, yeah. when when 1-1 one, one is halfway done go up to two ebays if you are not already and get the armory so oh, you yeah, can yeah. fire up 2-2 two, two immediately. That's what I mean. like, this game I was like just totally like out of my like I usually play better than this. Like you know what I mean? Yes. It's not bad what you do here, it's just I see a lot of potential to improve. Um you play a very defensive style so far. You did a drop, it was nice. Didn't do too much, okay. And against Roach Hydra you want to play defensive. Um so that's totally fine. A sensor turret would have been nice. Those tanks, for example, are very exposed. Not the best spot to have them. So either have them where those tanks are or behind the wall. So if he goes in, you can sandwich them with tanks on the ramp and <laughs> sandwich move if he is right here attacking. Oh yeah, true. Because now the tanks get flanked and the worst thing for tanks is if they get sandwiched or flanked. So try to prevent that. Um, here they are doing a nice job because the bailings will have a hard time. Yeah, look at that. That's fine. Or is it? Uh oh. Okay. 
Na, two SUVs lost. It's still fine. Mm, we could still have a look at your hotkeys. What I do like is I see combat shields in your marines. And you will you be... I mean, it's it's nerve-wracking if you think about how often I see, even in Master League, Marines without combat shields at the 10 minute mark. It happens so often. So I'm glad I see combat shields on your Marines. But other than that, what is your, do you, do you use control groups for your army and your production buildings? You, you, you like that? You like that I'm doing that? Uh, that wasn't, I like, yeah, do you do this? I mean, I don't see it in the setup. Do you oh, use, you don't see them? No, I don't see them. Do you use them? If you press 2-2, two, two, like 2-2 two, two really fast, you might be able to see them, I don't know. Okay. No, no, I have a different overlay. I can't see them. I have, an, I have a replay. Oh, thing you have a different overlay. Okay. I, I, yes. Um, but you, you use them, right? So... Where do you put your command centers and your your all your stuff basically to give me a short overview? So I have all my command centers on four. Okay. Um, I have all my production buildings on three. Okay. I have my main army on one, and then I have like for instance my tanks on on hockey two. Okay. Um, where are your eBay's and your armories? <coughs> um, I don't have those on hockey. Okay. So we should start to fix this first. Um, maybe not fix, but improve if you want to. I would put the eBay's and the Armory, as well as later maybe the Ghost Academy. Okay. Into the control group of the over uh, orbital commands. The reason behind this is normally you produce every twelve seconds SCVs. At least have throw down mules. Wait a second. Every minute. So you will get reminded every 12 seconds or every minute if your upgrades are done or not. Anytime you check your command center for scanning, throwing down a mule, supply depots if needed, which hopefully is not the case, um, or producing SCVs, you will get reminded of, hey, upgrades. You will just have a small look. Short look on the upgrades and oh, see, yeah. are they ready or not? Yeah, definitely. Okay, that's a good idea. So that's that's that. I like that you have all other up, uh, producing facilities in one uh, group, so you can shift, uh, not shift, but tap through them. So that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I learned how to do that. That was pretty. Good. Yes. Oh. I think you will be fine with the setup you currently have, meaning that you only use four control groups. Um, um, I, and then I usually lose, I have a, I have a, a number five hotkey for, usually I'll use that for drops or ah, okay. maybe like liberator harass. Okay. What, usually what? that's what I'll use uh, and that, that, the five for. Okay. What I have done for myself is I have the f orbital commands with the eBay's on the five and the production facilities on the six. So I have one to four for drops and army because sometimes it can happen that I'm dropping three places at once and then I need one for my army my main army and the rest for the three hot uh, dropships so I need up to four army hotkeys sometimes oh yeah but for you I think it is fine the, the fun part is in platinum you don't need to be too active with your drops you don't need to be all over him what you could, however, start to try out and use is um, play less a mechanical game, but more a strategic one. Where, for example, you load up six medivacs and split them into three groups, like two one there, two there, and two there. Mm -hmm. And then you just drop them at the same time. You say, yes. drop there, drop there, drop there. What happens is, in your league, most players will just be overwhelmed. So, they have to react, they won't split their units properly, so you will definitely find some damage. All you need to do then is make sure that you monitor them a little bit. Don't fly into a bunch of spore crawlers like yes in the main base, that would be disastrous. Um, if they are unloaded, you need to stim them, of course, for extra damage. 
Yes. And then what I would try you to do, it does take a little bit of practice, but if you move into, if you dropped and stimmed, then move them between the mineral line and the layer, nexus, whatever, and yeah. press the hold, hold um, position hotkey okay. so that they don't move away. The reason behind this is simple. Um, as soon as a stalker shows up or a roach or the queen, all those marines near the marine which gets attacked want to start attacking the queen, but most of the time they can't because they are limited in space. They, they, instead of attacking, they are moving and twitching, trying to find a place where they can reach the queen or the stalker. If they are on hold command, they ignore the queen and still attack Drones which are there, mm, turrets, pylons, the command center, whatever. Yeah. So we will find more damage. It's better than having them twitching around and not attacking at all. It's a small, simple trick which should help a lot. Um, best would be, of course, if you can keep the medivacs alive. The most yeah, best thing would be if you could pull your units back when they are attacked. Um, I would rather... For you, say now, try to just do it. Set up the multi-drop. You need vision for it, of course. Then do it. And as soon as all those units... You can do this after the stim. Left click, shift, hold, command. You can do it. It's fine. And after you did all of that, just ignore them. They will deal damage. Go back to base. Macro up heavily to have the next set of units ready. Either way, you can drop again or do a big push out. For you yeah. it's important, if you want to start with your multitasking, which I wouldn't recommend too much now, there's too much you can work on with macro. But if you want to start with multitasking, um, I have a guide written that you can read through on Gamer Sensei. It's called something with the artificial warfare, I don't know, art of warfare guide on multitasking. I can link it to you, where I explain multitasking on a whole new level to to get a understanding of what multitasking actually is and how you can implement it and practice it in your own game. Even for Gold League it, it would work, but most success you would have with just macro, in my opinion. Yeah, for now. Okay. So but you can you, have a how look. Do you do your, your drops at the same time? Like you say, so you get them into position um, do you have all of them on the same hockey, and then they, and then you just, you know, you just V drop on all of the bases at the same time? Is that how you usually do it? I have all drop ships which are dropping one location on one hotkey. So if I would have, let's get off the signals. Okay. If I have one drop ship here or two, yeah. and two others here, they are in separate control groups. They all you have them in separate control groups. Yes, so those two in the bottom line are on three, for example, and those on the top are on two. Right, okay. That's why I need one to four for my army, because sometimes I drop multiple locations, at least I try to, and if they would be all in the same control group, it would be a huge mess. It, it won't work. They will just right. do commands which are not good at all for mm. them in their situation. I was just, I, I was just wondering if it, if it, the system was set up smartly where it would actually know what you want to do with that. But okay. mm, No, so I, mm. I, I don't know if so. If there is a way, the system would do it awesome, but I don't know any. Oh, okay. Oh, that's fine. No worries. I just wanted to see how you did it. Okay, so just separate control groups. Yes. Okay, awesome. So... Now we have here, what's the upgrades? 1-1 one, one against 2-1. Ooh, the Bane Bomb! That did hurt hard. Yeah. Okay. He caught me off guard here for sure, you know? He definitely did. I was not in a good position at all. That, this is pretty much where I lost the game. That's, that's game, yes, I see. Don't think you can recover from it. Um, no. no. You want to be on 8 barracks? Like... At, at seven minute marks, roughly, rough, let's say, let's say eight minutes, okay? 7.30 to eight minutes, basically. 
mm. go up to eight ranks. It depends on the build order and the game, but as a benchmark, you could basically with the third base you want to set up. Okay, so when you get that, when you land that third base, you want to add even more barracks, right? Mm, yep. So if you build the third base, you want to go up to five, I think. And if it lands, you want to go and add three extra barracks so that you mm. are up to eight. Okay. So that that's that. So in ten minutes, you are with the eight one one or eight two one. It little. It depends a little bit. Or eight one two. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Exactly. Okay, that makes sense. All right. Okay. Mm, yes. You could try to. I know your your main base looks a little bit hectic, with the way the barracks are set up. The factory, yeah. the one starport, and the barracks are really nicely lined up. I would recommend you to try to set up all your base like in this manner, where you have lines of production facilities. Mm, this has different reasons. For for first of all, if you need to retreat, you have small bottlenecks where the, the opponent needs to go through. Like okay, it's good against archons, circlings, salads, even marines sometimes. On the other hand, if you need the space to surround, you can lift all of them, and suddenly you have an arc because he is in a straight. Your units are in a straight line, and you can grab around his army coming up. Just yeah. try it. It it it's a little bit mm, more sorted out the I, base well, I layout. Had, like yeah, like I was actually been wondering that. Like, what's, what's like the best? Like, how do you actually do that properly? Like, yeah, you know what I mean. Because each each base is a little bit different too. You know, like it, that's so true. You, so you're just saying like just try and set it up in a straight line, eh? At least the production facilities. Yes, that that's what I do most of the time, and it Where works you, quite um, nicely. Where do you drop your supply depots? Like in behind your mineral line? Like, behind uh, the mineral line and behind the natural. I have some in the wall and some as spotters on the edge on my bases. Oh, okay. So I have the kind of general concept for where those are supposed to be. Yes. Okay. Behind the mineral line is good. In a wall is good. As spotters. <laughs> and sometimes as wall for the third. Maybe not on that map because the ramps are so big, but. On some maps it works as well to have a wall of supply depots at the third base. Oh yeah. So they are spread out quite nicely. I think I have another Zerg game that might be better to go over if you want. It's uh, yes, of course. Jombre. Oh yeah, versus Jombre Zerg. Okay, so I give okay. you the promotion. Well, oh, you I, have it still. Good. Okay. Hey? Uh, yep. Yeah, no, no. I, I was just like, I just was on a big losing streak, so I... Uh, I was playing against the gold for that game. Ah, okay, yeah, I see. That happens from time to time. Yeah, this guy, I don't know. Like, I think, I think after this game, I looked this guy up because he didn't have a border, but I think he used he used to play in master. So. Oh wow. He was like master in like 2013 or something like that. So a while ago, but still better than me. Okay, I see. So is this where you play the two one one? I think so. I think I finally do it correctly here and go to one. Looks at least like a uh, Rex gas. So nice scouting again. Oh, losing the CV. What a shame. Okay, there's the bailing nest. You didn't go. Oh, where's the Reaper? No Reaper again. Okay. I, I wouldn't skip the Reaper at all. The Reaper is so important. Yeah, okay. Mm, because now you have way too much gas. Now he has way too much gas? You have way too much gas. Oh, I do? You don't need that much gas right now. I mean, what for? Right. I think I need it for upgrading my stim and stuff right away, no? It still lines up perfectly. Oh, I mean, do you mean my second gas? No, I mean the gas you might... So far, it's a little bit too much. Oh, okay. So you just flash SEVs on the gas? Mm, no, just get the Reaper, then it times out properly. Oh, I see. So get the Reaper, and then it's fine. Yeah. The Reaper also gives you the ability to scout. Like, what is he doing? Banelings? Lair? Lair? No, no base? No drones? Hello? That's strange. And you can way better scout with the Reaper. The Reaper is also good against 
against uh, circlings run bys as far as they don't have speed. It's it's just with the Reaper you can basically have the command center placed down on the low ground. With the Reaper. With the Reaper. Because he's on he's on the defensive. Uh, the Reaper gives you the mobility. You can catch the slow circlings as long as he's not doing a one base circling attack, which you will be able to scout with the Reaper. You will be able to hold the, so the the low ground, even if you have. Sometimes it can happen. Your Reaper is on the other side of the map, but you did SCV scout. So if you do SCV scout, then you can leave the Reaper at home for quite some time, up until 240, I would say. Depends a little bit. 230, 240. Uh, against that's, the circlings. That's a what, sorry? 230? 40? Yeah. Yeah. You can have the Reaper sit at home in s if you if you have CV scout. Oh, and you get the Reaper. Okay, then okay. the Reaper can sit at home and defend the potential 4 to 6 circlings which might opt to cancel your command center. So instead oh, of yeah. having to to co uh, to get SCVs from the high ground to defend the low ground, you have the Reaper there for oh, enough okay. time to finish it and then the Reaper can go and scout for the third base, for the gases and it, it should still be in time for everything which comes along. That's right, okay, that makes sense. Mm, what you also should do on maps like this, the E-base go into the wall right here and you kill the cooling tower. Do you kill the tower? Yes. What do you, oh, you build a tower? No, no, you, you, you destroy this cooling tower. The oh, E-base go into the oh, ramp ah, and you block okay. this. You destroy that for what though? Like an that, exit? He can't come in like easy, so you won't only have one entrance into your base. Um, you are about to move out with your 60 marines in the medivacs and your wall is not complete on the ramp. Right. That's not good. Okay. But if you have the eBay there, it's complete. The cooling tower tower is down, so this is blocked, and you can safely move out. You always only want to have one um, path from your opponent to go in. Later on, you clear the what rocks is, again. What, what 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 happens when you kill the cooling tower? Um, it collapses to the right side where your eBay is and blocks the entire path. Building up debris, which is 2,000 HP thick and has three armor. Oh my God! I didn't know that. I thought it, that was just like a no, good thing to be there. No, no, it it gets it becomes such debris which you can kill and block. Oh wow! Okay, great. I didn't know that. <clears throat> so that's okay. why why I would kill it. Yeah. Yeah. And with the two one one, if you play it correctly. If you really play it correctly, like high GM level skill, you would be, that's the fun part, you can, if all is perfectly done, you can have two medivacs, right yes, no, even earlier, two medivacs, 60 marines, can leave at 440, Stim finishes at 5-0-0, so you reach his base at 4-0-0 with 60 marines and Stim, and the two medivacs. At 4-4-0? Um, at 440 you move out with boost, you need to boost twice, and roughly, depending on the map, on 5 minutes, you are on his doorstep. So right now, if you were a GM level player, yeah. you could have been already for 15 seconds with your marines and stim on his base instead of being at home. That is yeah. how much you could improve in this game currently. Cool, isn't yeah. it? Definitely, yeah. This is, this, this is what you can reach if you want to, if you practice, if you are passionate. And so, I just have to, so do I, do I just have to like practice the build order? Oh yes, over and over? yes. Like, is there like something I missed in mm. this build order? Like, um, I would try. I, I don't know. There are so you many. To, you just have to experiment, right? 
Not really. You need to watch one replay very closely. There are dozens of replays and and builds uh, on YouTube, for example, or on the website spawningtool.com. Let me check that out. Where you where you can download replays and sort them, and and mo mo sometimes you have videos. Spawningtool.com. Um, okay. Have a look on a two one one. You will need maybe uh, uh, Google for for TY innovation, something like Bian GSL SSL stuff like that. Yeah. And they they cast the game of course, and there you can see okay sometimes it depends on the game. You will have to do some research sadly, but there is there are games out I saw them where they boost out at four minutes and thirty five seconds with sixty marines and two medivacs, oh and then God. you just go in step by step, second for second, and 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 check the differences between your build and their build. You won't reach it because they do worker stacking, perfect pathing, etc. But even if you just hit like if you leave at 450 or 450 uh, 54 or 5, it's still good. It's still good. But just to get an, an idea what do they different where because sometimes they do skip SCVs on purpose to make this happen. The thing oh, is, right, yeah. the thing is, I don't know if this is what you should do now. Skip SCVs. Um, the reason they can do this is because they have the execution on front, while they have the multitasking to macro back at home. If you don't have both of that, you will just massively put yourself behind, because yeah. you are microing but not macroing, or macroing and not microing. It doesn't work. So I, I rather encourage my students to go and macro up instead of try to go and multitask and harass. The reason for this is, think about it like that. Um, in most instances, when you do a drop and you kill eight drones, you feel good. But in the meantime, you didn't produce anything and he did produce. So in the most cases, you are just even. But you put more time and resources into harassing him than he did into defending. So if the best case for you is to be even, it would be better to just concentrate on yourself, macro up and get be ahead because you are better in macroing than him. Right, yeah. But you yeah. need to experiment what is best for you. I can't tell you that for now. Yeah, that's true. Okay. I don't know if you are a micro god or not. This is something yeah. only you can know. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I do my best. I think the best. I think the the best I've really been able to come up with is just, um, you know, I I'll get them into position. Yeah. And then I'll I'll go back home, do a bit of macro, um, go back, and then as I'm moving in, I'll like uh, just hotkey, um, you know, queue up some SUVs, some some army, and then I'll just do my attack and focus. Yeah. On I see. Is that the best way to like? Hunt? Like, uh, that's really all you can do, no? I mean, mm. no, it's 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 fine. I mean, here you see, okay, the lack of third base, so this means already something is, is strange. And yeah, the good thing about bio normally is you can just go in, take some damage, and then go. I mean, here you are dealing lots of damage. So you killed everything, now would be the perfect time to just, perfect, go back. So you can drop more. I think that is a little bit suicidal. Oh yes, it definitely is. You get some damage done, it's nice. But overall, it would have been better to not lose those units. So, what you can try, not so much against Zerg, maybe more against Protoss, but maybe even against Zerg is after the drop in the natural, which was really good, you killed like 15 drones, not bad. Load up and just park your medivacs somewhere here, I don't know, or unload them there. So you have still this threat going on to him, even though you are not doing anything with those units, you're putting pressure onto your opponent because you uh -huh. could come back. 
And yeah, yeah. now imagine you have two medivacs, like here are two more. Double pressure and back behind, as long as he doesn't have mutalists, you can do this. Sometimes drop, heal up, attack, pull back even if you just kill one evolution chamber or get three drones. As long as you macro properly behind, it's totally worth it. Because you force him to make mistakes, and if he makes more mistakes than you, you are ahead. The good thing is in StarCraft 2 there are potentially dozens of way to get ahead and win. You can outplay your opponent, you can force him to make more mistakes, you can macro better than him, you can micro better than him. All those are chances you can take. You just need to know what to do when, and this comes with time and experience. For now, I really would just go in with by the book, scouting, macro, big pushes, or set up those multi drops and do them. But don't don't try to be too fancy with micro and overstep. Just take every win you get, every small win, every th single small piece of success you can get, like killing two drones or a queen, and get out. This in your league is more than enough damage. Better than losing those two Medivex and 60 Marines in the second drop, which did nothing. Yeah, true. So, so a little bit uh, that was, better. That was greedy, but yeah, holy shit, that first drop, like that. That was, was like, fuck yeah. So, and I then take it and go drone. back. It, it's like you won the lottery, and you go in and ask for more, and then they punch you in the face because they say, hello, no. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't yeah. work. So take yeah. what you get, be happy with it, and get more behind from yourself, and, and just take small pieces step by step that's right, what right. I better safe than sorry that that I mean, if you look I mean my worker count is way higher than his now it's it's awesome I don't know do you do you win this game you should win this game right I should but I think I lose oh okay so let's let's see what because I'm, I'm bad man I, I don't know <laughs> what to do like like past this point I don't <laughs> know what to do you know like I know I need to take my third base you know like keep pumping units out yeah you know, try and get my upgrades but it's a lot of multitasking so like i just That's... sometimes i just get nervous right i'm mean, like i don't know what to do like does he have mm -hmm. bigger armor than me now like i don't know you know like there's just yeah like, what, I see. What, what composition is he going you know like oh now he's got spore crawlers you know yes like, what do i like I, I what can i do now i don't know oh the... now he's ninja now he's ninja basing me that you know like, that's the thing if you if you if you encounter someone, even a Protoss as well, who is not regularly expanding at its time, like in TVP it would be at the four to five minute mark, depending on how greedy he is. In TVC like two thirty to three thirty, if there is still no base in in between this time, you can't go in and attack him. You did with your drop, which did damage which never should have done the damage. So that was good, but normally this means for you, okay, he's tacking up, he needs to do something. Either have a ninja base, can happen, okay. So with the shift command you can have one marine, or mo one medivac, or whatever, have go across each base, check it if you want to. But if he is, if he is bunkering himself up, and this holds for every matchup, you don't attack into it. You say, okay, you won't, don't leave. Uh, you won't, you don't want to leave. I contain you. Okay, so you can. He doesn't want to leave. He's like in his shell, on two bases. He doesn't want to leave. And you say, fine, don't leave. You get a ring, turrets, tanks, bunker. You contain him and get the whole map for yourself. You can do whatever you want. Go up to four bases, ten barracks. As long as he doesn't bust out, you're fine. And the more pressure you put onto him with the drops and maybe later the contain, the the more difficult it gets for him to bust out. If he if he wants basically if he wants you to take the map, say yes, thank you, and take that map. Don't feed into him your units. There's no need to. If you have three bases and he sticks on two, you win. Basically. By saying macro you should win. Yeah, definitely. So like um if you notice so like Obviously, he would be dropping his third here or there, right? Normally, I mean, yes. Like, normally. So, if you don't see a third by, let's say, against Zerg by, like, 3.30 at the mm -hmm. latest, yeah. he's either, he's teching up on two bases, yeah. and potentially, like, in this game, he's fucking ninja. ninja yes. Basing. The ninja is super late, but what he could have done is two base mutalisk, uh, <laughs> some kind of roach attack, nidus worm, 
potentially stuff like that or a big two base bane bust but th this would hit way earlier but then you know okay something is going on and then it's worth to throw down a scan and see what's going on and then you prepare you get your third base you don't need to land it you just prepare and if he comes at you it's the same thing but you are prepared and he feeds into you and he has to feed into you otherwise mm, if he turns back then he plays from behind. Yeah. The good, th the fun part is, it would be smartest to just go back and play from behind rather than feeding and throwing the game completely. But most people don't do this. They are on the pressure. They put themselves into it and are like, I need to do something. I need to go in. I need, and then they lose, and then that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's how oh, it yeah, most no. likely works. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, I don't know. Here, I don't know. He's got like. Investors, Banelings, Hydras. It's, He's got like lots going on here. It's, it's way too much he wants to have on two bases, so normally this should never work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Never. I don't know what happened. I think, I don't know. I guess we'll see. I got tanks, so I don't know if that's the best way. Yeah. He doesn't I mean, really have roaches, so tanks I don't really need. I mean, this game goes quite long. I don't think we will be able to go through all of this now because oh, yeah, yeah. time will be up quite soon. But I think basically we covered a lot of stuff which you can work with, like the benchmarks yeah. and everything, the shift yeah. command, which is very helpful, uh, the hotkey setup, uh, the general scouting. Yeah, you're totally right, though, man. Like, he's on two bases, he doesn't have a third. You know, I shouldn't have been, uh, I'm like... There's, there's no need. He's teching up, right? Yeah. yeah. He's gonna have a better army than me. So having the siege tanks not sieged was... I think that was what cost you the game. You could have won right here. You could have won the game yeah. right here. If you just siege up and lure him between the cooling tower and, and this edge or whatever the scrap ramp yeah, and he needs right, to funnel right. through and and he's eating all those siege tank shots oh and, i know and yeah, then I the, like, I'm, I'm just that's what you mean like i just like i don't know also <laughs> also right now, you know also sadly you miss half your army down there yeah i didn't set a rally point yeah so those two things and you could have won immediately instant gg yeah. That's yeah. That cost that's me the bad. game right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> at um, at least it put him it puts him into a position where he can come back and win potentially. Yeah. So th those are the things where you need to start maybe thinking. Okay, I am with siege tanks, not widow mines, so I need to be slowly pushing forward. Have always one marine stim and move across or scan ahead of your army. So you know what's coming and where you need to siege. That that's maybe yeah. a good point to have. Yeah. yeah, I start. Yeah, and I and I know that too. Right? Which is which is bad. I mean, I I know that kind of stuff, right? It's just yes. like I just didn't do it this time. I don't know. Like uh, I know. I don't know. Maybe after this, I was just like, oh shit, I forgot to do that. So yeah. I started doing it more in my other games, but. Yeah, just stress, man. I don't know. High stress that's, game sometimes. Yeah, yeah, that's that's true. Like at this, like I mean, look at this replay, man. Like I'm so ahead right now. Like you, I was you so are. Ahead. Yep, you are definitely. I was. I had a bigger army. Um, way bigger, you know, like doubling his army supply. Yeah, like I had a way bigger army. I mean, he had two armor, but I had one one. So I mean, that's pretty even. Yeah, it is. Um, you have you know, two two I had, on the way. I have, I had two two on the way. Yep. I had 2-2 on the way, I had like combat shield uh, and stim, and I tanked, yeah, all I had to do was siege those tanks and grab the rest of my army there before I went and I would have won that. Yep, that's yeah, exactly really that. Shit. Oh well, live and you learn I guess, but it's those little tips. It's, it's hard to apply everything that you hear and you learn. Like, of course. That That's why I... That's why I would recommend go into custom game versus on easy AI first and just practice one thing at a time. Then, if you feel comfortable with it, try if it works in, in, in a real game to have some progress there. 
and then put the next thing, go into custom game, practice that if possible, and slowly then you put those pieces together to a full grown player if you want to, where you can crush diamonds in Master League eventually. That's yeah, what I would exactly. recommend for you. All right, cool, man. So, um, yeah, do you just want to like uh, kind of recap everything for me, quick. So, like, um, you know, you said like uh, benchmarks. Um, you were talking about uh, shift commands, right? Yes, I can. I can do. Do you have any question before I do this? Left, where you think? Oh, that's very important for me to know now. Uh, any questions about what's right? About anything. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Oh fuck. Um. Maybe a bit about uh, just like the Zerg build. So okay, so never mind. I don't know. I guess I kind of know all the buildings now. Yeah. That's a Hydro scan. Oh yeah, I know what that looks like. Yeah, infestors. Um, how, like, what do you? How do you uh, beat infestors? Like, what do you need to to beat those? Um, you can try ghosts, but normally it's up to scanning and splitting. Knowing that they are there, don't get caught by fungal. That's it. Knowing, knowing what they're, yeah, knowing that they're there. Okay. Yeah. And That's how about like, um, um, I've been in games where against like Protoss, and they're like just trying to turtle up and go carriers or something, but they yeah. have like a bunch of those Oracle. Yeah. Um, those freezing, like they freeze your army. Uh huh. Like, how do you? defeat that? How do you prevent that from happening? Is there any way to do that? Always have one marine stimming ahead of your army. And that he'll soak up the entire freeze? Yep. <clears throat> he just triggers, like the Widow Mine, one marine is enough to trigger it. Oh, awesome. So that's why you, if you know he's opening up with Stargate, Stargate just go one marine, stim up in front of your army, or scan. Wo works both. But you need to know where you... It's like... Just think of it, you have your army, and either you scan and see what is in front of your army, or you're holding your eyes closed and just say, go up there. And they don't know what's hitting them, they don't know what's awaiting them, so you are, maybe you put them into a meat grinder and you don't even know it. So don't, just, just don't. Just don't do that, yeah, it's just yeah. So smart. Stim marine, yeah. one marine forward or scan. Basically for TVC as well. And for TVT as well against tanks. Always have something in front. Scan, medevac boost, marine stim, doesn't matter, something. Okay, yeah, sounds good. Yeah. Okay. Mm, let me see. I do have everything written down in the notes, which I will send you, so... You can have a look over it again. Oh, excellent, okay. Yep. So, no real need for me to sum it up again, I guess. It's also a lot I did talk about, so maybe just give it a look here. It should have said everything. And then I think you were okay with me uploading it on my YouTube channel. Did I ask you that? Upload what, sorry? I did record the scouting session and I would like to upload it on my YouTube channel if you're okay with it. If no, then I won't. But I need the, to uh, ask you. The coaching session? Yes. Oh, sure, yeah, I don't, yeah, that's fine. Okay, thank you. Okay, so, if you like, I will give you the notes now. If you like even further, I can give you the YouTube as well. There are quite some coaching sessions. Maybe you can find something else there as well if you want to ha put that yeah, much time please, into yeah, it. Yeah, like, uh, yeah, definitely, like, uh, link anything you want sure. in our uh, Skype conversation there. And I can awesome. Always, I, can, I can reference... I will do this. And then you can feel free to chat me and book another session if you feel like. Uh, whatever. Yeah, most it's, definitely. It's... Most definitely, Daniel. Yeah. Okay. Because now we did cover up a little bit about general things. If you, if you start practicing and get improving yourself, then we can start either do the life coaching thing or go specific into TVT, TVP and TVC for its own because those matchups can be nerve wracking at itself, but for now I think if you just go up with your macro, you should be able to hit diamond yourself really easily, depending on how much practice you do, but it should be possible with only macro in my opinion. Yeah, most But you will see this how, how you do. Yeah, sounds okay. good, man. Uh, awesome. So what was this, what was spawning tool.com again? What was That's that? for build orders and replays. Because of the 211 you wanted to see or look where you can move out at 440. 
Right. Right. Okay. Sounds yeah. good. Awesome. So with that said, I would say thank you so much. Yeah, thanks a lot, man. I appreciate the help. You're welcome. So thanks. have a good one. You too, man. Take care. Thanks. Bye. Bye-bye. Hey, Odea, thank you for watching. If you'd like to support me, simply hit the thumbs up button. Do you have any wishes, feedback or suggestions? Put them into the comments below. You may also subscribe if you're new to the channel. I wish you a wonderful and stress-free day. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you.